Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to a React Dandy, a fate, a Zia, a row. Um, turn on episodes. I actually forgot. Let me check. 18 and 19, had to, you know, pull up my little document. 18 and 19, that's what we're doing tonight. Should be exciting, of course. Why am I already doing the outro? Of course, I was doing the outro already. Okay, let me just boom. F everything, F the noise, okay? We gotta get into it. This is some comments. We got a couple comments from the last two videos, four episodes. Um, I'm not gonna respond to all these, but I just wanna, you know, a little tippy tippy hair, a little tippy tappy there. Um, so first, real quick, ED, Emmy on Iris, Iris Vale, Eerie, Falling in Love. Um, I just think this is really funny, so it doesn't have the full read more. Kiritsugu Imiya met Iris Vale when she was created inside a tube. Isn't that just kind of crazy? Through her initial interactions, he discovered that she was useless, dot, dot, dot. That's just kind of crazy, is it not? Um, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. This, though, this part of the bottom is crazy. So this is about um, Caster's death, right? And I actually have been converted. I agree with this. I think this is cool. Because I was kind of reading it as like a Divine Punishment type beat. Um... But this line here, the light of Excalibur, because, you know, Saber was the one that, you know, dropped the nuke on him, embodies the will and dreams of all soldiers, which no doubt would include Gillis himself, a former knight. Mmm, mmm. So it, like, cut to, through to his heart a little bit. I like that. And then the idea that he, in that moment, saw Joan of Arc was really, really, like, because he did. He did see Joan of Arc, right? That was that was something shown to us, right? Um, but really focusing on that and it being, like, this line here, um, Joan matters to Gillis far more than God. Her forgiveness is infinitely greater than God's judgment. Being forgiven seemed to cause him to question why he went down this path, path of blasphemy. As while God's wrath never came, Joan's love would always remain, which to him is all that really matters. Ah, Yeah, so I I really like that. And it, and it ties together the Joan flashback better. Um, and it even makes, like, I even like that an additional level because it's Saber who's dropping the nuke. And so, and Saber was already like a Joan of Arc figure for him. So that connection makes sense. Um, and it also doesn't like replace the Ryanosuke beliefs. Cause that would have kind of, yeah, I didn't really think about that. But like, if he had been like, oh, it's divine punishment, then that would go against what he and Ryanosuke had like agreed with. And then that would have kind of trampled on that character moment and that character development. So yeah, I like that. I just want to say I'm converted. Um, this is mostly nice stuff. And saying that Joan of Arc is in another one, Fate Akrofa Uh I just think Joan of Arc is cute, and I would have a crush on her. Mm, thoughts? All right. Anyways, continuing. Um, oh my goodness, I actually didn't read this one. Give me five minutes. Okay, yeah, this is a really cool comment. I really like this. So, first thing, um, I am caster. It's true. Second thing, this thing is, I think, what I was referring to when I was talking about, like, the Iskandar, um, or, like, the Alexander the Great, like, with religious freedom, the hybridization thing here. Um, he probably wanted to hybridize Persian culture and Greek culture in some way, and everybody, the Greeks, hated that. Um, I didn't know they hated that. That's interesting. But I think I had heard, and that what I was referring to is the hybridization attempt, um, which to me, I was like, when I heard that, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. He was trying to blend the cultures together instead of just stomping the next one out, right? So I kind of liked that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not something I'm fully aware of, so it seems like people might not have liked that. So that's a, you know, bit of an L for him. Um, but Alexander the Great also just died in his 30s. So GG, it's not like it had to, it's not like it had time to come around and bite him in the booty, you know? Um, this is about Gilgamesh's flying spaceship. I don't even know what's going on there. He probably has a PlayStation up there. I agree. Um, though there is a point of, it has emergency evasion techniques to avoid crashing into another Vimana. Because the Vimana is like the treasure, right? That's like the spaceship thing. It makes me think, is there another Vimana somewhere hidden in the world? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, and then this last thing is really cool. It's a Gilgamesh excerpt from the light novel uh, about a human... Although his human body was made of mud, he was a foolish jester who stretched out to stand next to the Son of God as his equal. So he like stood alongside Gilgamesh. Um, and when he died for being struck for his arrogance to do that, um, he said, who will understand you after I die? Who will walk beside you? My friend, when I imagine that you will be alone from now on, I can't help but shed tears. And that's actually goaded. That's actually like, you got to respect it. So it's like, he doesn't want Gilgamesh to be alone in his divinity, you know, in his like original King Giga Chad status. He's like, let me walk along with you. For your own sake. I don't want you to be alone, you know? That's crazy. And I think that's that's super cool because it makes, like this last line, a fool who stretches their hands towards realms not of man. There's only one person in heaven or earth who can love your ruin. That is none other than I, Gilgamesh. Sink into my embrace, O oh, you glorious and illusionary men. That is my decision. That, by the way, is pretty incredible words. I really like the words. Just gonna throw that out there. But that makes a lot more sense. That makes the scene with Saber make a lot more sense where he was talking with Iskandar about like, 
I'm gonna love watching you be destroyed, Saber. I'm gonna love your ruin. That that whole spiel, it's like it's kind of a similar thing where it's the fool that's reaching towards something they can't reach, and he can't help but think that is beautiful in its, in its own way, right? Um, more brilliant than all the treasures he had collected, right? And I just ooh ooh, I like that. You know my favorite part about that? I'm a boy made out of mud. You know what I mean? Although his human buddy was, body was made of mud, he was a foolish jester who stretched out to stand next to the God, the son of God as his equal. That's just me, bro. I'm a little mud boy trying to, you know, clamber my way up the, the ladder, the golden ladder into the holy gates. And I'm going to just stand up there and be like, yo, I'm making the place a little muddy, all right? Sorry I didn't wash my boots before I came in. That's me. Or like leave the boots outside, all right? I tracked mud into heaven. I just, I don't know. I really like that. And I, I what I like even more is that Gilgamesh respects that. He was like, you know what? That's beautiful in its own way. Um... This comment I pasted onto a notepad because I got it as a text thing, so I just wanted to put it here. Um, the thing... Why did I want this one? I forgot. Oh, yeah. Um, freaking Kirei. Kirei never bought the ticket. This, and so this is really funny. Kirei would have no reason to pack his bags, meaning Kirei did all that entirely for the bit. He could have assassinated him like 20 minutes ago, but he pretended to leave just so he could hoe him, which is really scary because Kirei has developed a tool equally as terrifying a sense of humor it it's actually makes sense for him to do something stupid like that for the bit it's not just like plot making it like not it's like it doesn't feel like the show's trying to pretend he's gonna leave to try to catch us off guard the audience because you could read it that way right like oh he was pretending to leave because that's just trying to make us the audience like not really know what he's gonna do but it actually also can kind of be explained with him just trolling um, and same thing with, like, he said all this stuff about being afraid to destroy himself entirely just to troll Gilgamesh. Yeah, it's like, as much as it's trolling the audience a little bit to make it uneasy, it also makes sense for him to start trolling people because he's trying to have his own, he's trying to have fun now. You know what I mean? He's trying to pursue pleasure more. So that's really terrifying. And I like how you can read it that way. Um, but -dum -but -dum -but -dum. this is like an Archibald mini def defense. Um, the first thing being like him insulting Waver is kind of correct. Yeah. It's true. I've been convinced. Yeah, Waver is just waving it up. I really hope this guy can make it through this through this show. All right, I need him to have his character arc. Iskandar carry him. Let's go. Let's keep that going, man. I love it. Um, it is kind of true. So I'm not gonna fault him for that one. This one got blocked out. GG. And then this one. Um, this I actually I I can I can understand what you mean redeemable quality, but you can also like like this is a crazy thing. Um. Despite his fiance betraying him, clearly he still cares for her and gives up the only chance he had to heal his magic and body to save the same person who betrayed him. He's surprisingly sentimental and emotional. Yes, he's also just like, what's the word where like you're like fully dedicated to somebody else and you're sim simping? It's also kind of a simp. You know what I mean? I don't want to call Archibald a simp, but like I guess I kind of am. Yeah. So like, I don't know. Even even. Is love a good thing? Is love a redeemable quality? That's a fun question. Because even a lot of evil people, and I say evil kind of cavalier, like kind of, you know, without much thought in it. A lot of people that do a lot of really bad things that I would label as villainous love people. They have families and stuff. And so like, I don't know. Maybe, man, that's kind of a fun mini question. Is love a redeemable quality? What do you think? What do you think? Comment down below. What do you think? Hmm, that's gonna be my new day. That's a new thing we're doing on the channel. Every episode, I ask you a fun question. What do you think of that? <laughs> no, I'm playing. Not doing that. It's too much work. But yeah. Hmm. That's actually an interesting question. Because I usually don't really... Hmm. Proving it... Because the crazy thing is, if, if you're proving that you can care about one person... Bro, it might be... Okay. It might be more redeemable to not love anybody. Because if you love one person, that shows that you have the capacity to love, but you're choose you're being selective in who you choose it to. So if you're willing to kill a bunch of other people, but it's like, oh, but I love this person, then you're having to like go like, why don't you love the other people? You know, extend a little bit of that emotion. It shows the emotions there. If you're straight up like a psychopath and you don't have any of that, you don't love anybody, then it's like, oh, well, you're straight up like, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of all fair game, so I can't really, you know, it makes a bit more sense. At least you're consistent. Maybe maybe consistency is redeemable, and that means I can attack him for his love. Ooh, that'd probably be the, the best counter to um, love being redeemable, is that consistency is more redeemable. Anyways, uh, fair though, fair. Bram, bram, bram. Sacrificing all seven things is necessarily speci specifically to access the root. The grail can still take shape and be used in other ways without all seven dying. Really good to know. I was confused about that. Um... This is true, this is true, and this is true. 
Especially that last one. Shout out Eerie for being like, talk to her, not me. Yeah, you tell him, Eerie. Rip Lancer. Actually, Rip Lancer. That was so sad. That actually gutted me, bro. Um, remember that time when Pink Cube started to Gilgamesh and Gilgamesh all over the place? I don't, but this vid brought forth that memory. Bro, shout out Minecraft. If, okay, if I, if I could right now, I would heart this message. Shout out Minecraft reports for that one, bro. <laughs> um, I thought this was a cool point. It's basically a point on present, presentism, right? Where it's like, oh, we shouldn't judge the, like, kind of saying Saber and Kirits, Emiya, I call him Emiya saying that Saber and Emiya lived in such different times that like no wonder their perspectives are so off and maybe they're both kind of right and so it's kind of like cool because us thinking to Saber if we judged her too much then we'd probably be engaging in presentism being like oh like using our current world current culture ideologies and applying them back then when that wouldn't really work and then but what's funny is you can also kind of do it reverse and that's what's happening with saber judging emia right where it's like it's a reverse presentism where she is actually from the past and trying to apply things or like what she understands forward in a way that doesn't make sense to her which is like world war one type beat you know what i mean um so yeah that, i thought that was it's a, it's a really good point to bring up um and then like this is definitely meaning and there is definitely meaning and chivalry on the battlefield kiri is definitely like, wrong for that I don't know. I think my favorite thing... I gotta bring up Discord. Somebody said something really goaded the other day. Right here, right here. Uh, can I just show y'all that? I'm just gonna show y'all. Right here. I hate heroes. Their promises and dazzling glory invites people to commit atrocities and commit horrible evils. Commits horrible evils for the sake of the promise and dazzling glory of the grail. That's kind of true for Emiya, is it not? I think that's actually kind of true. Right? Where, like, as much as he's... Like, he's abandoning chivalry and all these things... Um, but he's kind of like chasing the grail in the same way that nor that like a hero is chasing whatever they claim to be chasing, right? So he's acting in kind of a similar role to the hero, except that he's not making it look pretty. Um, but he is all doing it in the name of he's he's justifying his actions in the name of the the dazzling beauty of the grail. Whereas like Saber would say like oh chivalry, you know, um, doing the right thing, whatever, all that type beat. A bunch of like night stuff so yeah i mean it's the there is a literal difference with the grail being a feat like a, an end that's very strong like a very like um like a it's real it's a thing you can hold as opposed to like chivalry or you know whatever else being like abstract ideals so i mean that's the biggest difference where that that kind of like equivalence would fall apart but i think it's pretty it actually does kind of still hit for me right um Oh my goodness, hair in my face. Go away, please. But yeah, so I thought that was an it's, an... it's an interesting back and forth, right? And I really... I just... It's called optics, Emiya. It's called optics, okay? You can do a lot of garbanzo in this world. You can do horrible things in this world, as long as you justify it in a way that people will swallow. You know what I mean? Shout out swallowing, not spitting, right? And so, if you, like do things and you don't make it look pretty then no one's gonna follow you right so for me it's 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 not even about really like emia being wrong it's just more so about like emia you have to at least pretend and do some concessions in order to work better with saber it's not even about oh i disagree with your mentality it's more so about i think you are not executing it the best way you know what I mean? I think the best way to execute things mixes in a little bit of chivalry because it makes the pill easier to swallow for the people that you need to help you with your task, right? So is there meaning in chivalry? I would say yes, as a means to an end in an utilitarian sense, right? As opposed to it having value in its own way. My nose is itchy, right? Um, It's not a good, chivalry wouldn't be a good in and of itself. It would be a good as a means to pursuing some other good, right? That's probably how I would label chivalry. Shout out Aristotle for that framework I just borrowed a little bit. But yeah, um, yeah. Especially in, in modern days where it's like, oh, I'm just gonna drone strike like a bunch of families, you know? It's like, oh, drone strike, yeah. It's kind of like, how do we even have chivalry anymore? It's kind of GG. We've kind of like, it's like, we, you could be like, oh, this is the fault of not having chivalry where you're able to do a bunch of war crimes. But it's like, it's kind of too late now. I don't think we can go back because it's more efficient to be brutal, you know? But you gotta pretty up the brutal so that people are okay with it. Oh man, the world is such a problem. Um, but yeah. 
I think ideally we wouldn't have, we would have Chivalrous War because that would lead to less death. But guess what? As long as you have one person that's willing to break the rules, it entices everyone to break the rules. You know what I mean? If like we say, guess what? Nukes, we can't build or house nukes anymore. There's a reason nobody's done that. Because if one guy got a nuke, I want nukes too. You think I'm gonna let him have nukes if I don't get to have nukes? And it's like, well, I don't trust other people to get rid of their nukes. Just what, on verbiage? Yeah. It's one of those kind of situations where it's like, yeah, is chivalry dead? I mean, yeah. Would it be better if we had it? Obviously. But that's not the world we live in. So let's work with what we've got. It's realistic, right? But a little bit of it, just to make pretty it up, I think it's effective. It's all about effectivity, okay? <laughs> this is depressing. Anyways, um, no one getting the real is indeed a possible ending, considering this is the fourth one. Really interesting. True. Makes me very curious what happened to the, in the first three. What heroes got summoned? Who died? Why did nobody get the grail? How did nobody get the grail? What, the last two kill each other and tie? Like, what went wrong? I feel like it, it shouldn't be that hard to at least get the grail. Well, did they fail to obtain it? Is that true? I kind of assumed that they might have obtained it and then did something with it, but didn't... But, like, the world went on afterwards, right? They didn't, like, destroy everything. Um, this was just a super nice comment. I really like this comment. Um... Shout out the Oshinoko. Shout out Oshinoko. Season 2 is airing right now. I watched episode 2 literally last night. Shout out the Oshinoko reactions. Shout out Mushoko Tensei reactions. Really appreciate this comment. I'd give it a heart if I was able to, but this is sadly a screenshot, but I do appreciate it. Um, And then this was clarified to me. Pink still cooks after having dropped the show and burning down an orphanage. It's true. Uh, He's on a wheelchair. And yeah, just another Emmy, I think. So, true, true, true. Chat. Um, Let's jump into actual episode stuff. So... 1617. Um, oh boy. Rip. I mean, there's not much I need to recap. Lancer got hoed so hard, bro. Lancer got just destroyed. This was some of the, bro, this is maybe the best scene they've had. This scene was so good. It's just sad. Bro dropped his name. He threw his name in there. One more time. One more time for the suffer, for the suffering. It's just Saber standing there that kills me. And Emiya just doesn't care. He's just like, yeah, let me smoke a cig real quick. You'd crush the only wish I hold in my heart, bro. And Saber. I'm kind of interested on her, um, her gauntlets, by the way. Is her one gauntlet? They're armored differently, aren't they? That's probably just the way that the sword hand goes, that she kind of can block with it a little bit. That, bro, it's that line. Let the let the grail be cursed. That line is so good, bro. And he, like, coughs it out a little bit. You can hear it in his voice. That he's like, ugh. You know what I mean? It sounds like he's, like, about to weep. You know what I mean? Like, that's how strong the emotions are. It's, like, despair, bro. It's not just anger. And it turns to anger in the last moments, but... That performance just is so good. I was thinking about that. But, yeah. Um... Rip Archibald, well, yeah, Rip Archibald. Rip freaking Archibald's wife, Dunzo. Wait, this, uh, yeah, Rip freaking Tokiomi gets betrayed. Rip Lancer, Gilgamesh, welcome to Team Kirei. And we're basically hoed. Kirei has a million spells. Yep, that's where we're at. Okay, <laughs> let's jump into the next episode. This one's named Distant Memories. I just read it on accident. Okay, Distant Memories, chat. Let me, ooh, ooh, look at him. Look at him go. Getting the right audio and subtitles on the first try. It was set to English. Japanese. That's what I thought. All right, let's get this going. Ooh, wait, I'm kind of curious. Let me actually, I want to hear, I want to hear the English performance of um, Lancer dying. I want to hear Lancer's voice when he's dying. I think that'd be interesting to hear. Let me just, out of curiosity. Ooh, okay, it came through at the end for me. The beginning and the middle, it didn't quite hit for me. It did not quite hit. That I like that that last line. He he, I like. I think he ate on that last night line. Ooh, it got that little fade too. Like this. 
Because it goes up. I like. Okay. Okay. The, I think the voice actor cloaked when it started. When the when he started pulling it up. Okay. Sorry. I was just curious. All right. Japanese subtitles. Everything. Get it going. Get yourself a snack. Get yourself a drink. Treat yourself. Right. It's Facey or Friday, baby. Let's get this going. In a three, a two, a one. Bang. Oh man, I'm not ready. This is gonna be so hard. It's Whale Island. Wait. Um. Wait. It's gone! Where's Kilwa? Oh, this kid's gonna be lit. He's going off the top one. Off the top ropes. Hit him with a people's elbow. What's gonna happen to these kids? Which one of them's gonna... Oh, this is Baby Emiya. Oh, shit. I just realized. This is Baby Emiya. Emiya is from Whale Island because of the OP, the end of the OP. So they're going to humanize him and show us why he has the mentality he has. Okay. Alright, this woman's dead. Guaranteed that woman is a corpse in within five minutes. Carrie? That dog is a problem. Mmm. What happened to her? Happens to the best of us. Oh, he's driving. Oh dang, this girl got uh sorry. Apologize. I saw I shouldn't sexualize you out the out the go. Your mansion? It's because you got that Riz. Aww. Sorry, I just looked again. My fault. What's her name? Shirley? My fault, Shirley. Oh no, she's driving. Why did I think he was driving? Say it to me. Emil Kiritsugu. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Kiritsugu. She sounds like me, bro. Oh, what? You thought that'd be a reveal show? You think I didn't figure out this kid's name already? Yeah, I'm paying attention. <laughs> Come on now. They really think they got- they're gonna pull the wool over my eyes? Who are you? Father? Yeah, okay. Special flower? Is that a magic flower? It looks magic. Or is it just cool? That's gotta be magic. Okay, that's- oh, he does that remember with his heart. He knows this magic. Yep. So what's gonna happen to this girl and the dad? Cause we need them to be destroyed. Oh, you got one to work. Good job, Shirley. Hmm. What's her bloodline? I would like to live here. Why, though? I, why would... Okay. I was about to say, it's guaranteed he's about to say no. It feels like a no is coming, but I, I, I don't know why, but that's why. Too young. Fair enough. How old is Shirley? Um, I don't know how old anyone is right now. Hmm. 
Let her cook, bro. I don't... Oh, they just don't like that he's watching. Did you get a Coca-Cola? I like this lighting. It's golden hour. Oh, she, he gave her a dagger. Yeah, right. Don't get attached. Don't get attached. We gotta preempt this, bro. We cannot let this girl worm her way into my em empathy, bro. It's too late. I'm literally coping out loud. She's literally cutting a melon. Or a what is that? What fruit is that? Using the talisman to cut fruit is crazy. Wait. Could you use that on Eerie to make her not disintegrate? If you like perfected that? I mean, yeah, humans living forever would be lit too, but. Aw. Oh, hers died. That's sad. Is GG. I'm scared. We're gonna in get attacked by a snake. <laughs> Imagine. She doesn't get killed by a human in like some depressing thing or like the town doesn't like revolt against them or like, you know, people don't attack or anything. It literally is just, she gets bit by a snake and dies by a snake bite. <laughs> I'm just convinced she's dead. I, uh, maybe I should relax. I'm just paranoid, okay? Look how beautiful this is. All right, chat, lower your guard. She has touched her hair. Big flag. That's a, that's a, that's a, a sign. You can change the world too. Let's make more empty promises. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. Good reflection shot, good reflection shot. She's not gonna be there to watch you grow up. Oh my god, it's, it's over. No, it's, she's so dead, don't say that. <laughs> no, I can't handle it. Yeah, see the little crush, the, little, the blush? She was touching her hair earlier. You know, things get a little, a little bit freaky. Aww. Yeah, if I'm Emmy, I got a crush on her too, at that age. <laughs> I'm so clutch. All right, what happened? What's wrong? You are a serious looking fellow. And now the townspeople probably did. Yeah, townspeople are revolting. Oh, I hope they don't hurt her. That'd be really depressing. If superstition gets her killed, that'd make... Or, or maybe something to do with the church. Maybe it's the same church, and that's part of the, the fear he has towards Kire. That's probably it, yeah. Yeah, shit. 
She's either not allowed to come or she's dead. No, don't go down there. Ah, oh, it's over. No, she's not dead yet. They're not gonna want to hang out anymore, bro. Oh, another chill? I appreciate y'all. Basketball homies are homies. Yeah, try it. I'm scared. A bottle? Uh, three, nine, five, something, 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 test. She's, is she eating a chicken? That, okay, that was not on my bingo card. Did the chickens eat her? No, she's eating the chicken. Okay. Shirley, why are you eating a chicken? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Wait, did she actually get cursed? Was it real? Wait. She actually got cursed. The guy wasn't wasn't lying. She's still there a little bit. She doesn't want to hurt you. She's scared she's going to hurt you. I think. What did you do? Did you use yourself as a test? Yo, go call dad. No, I don't like that. I really don't like that. Lock her in the chicken coop, bro. That's not gonna be enough. There's still time? No, I think she's in... I think it's an exorcism thing. I don't think she... T ah! She must have actually gotten cursed. Wow, I did not expect that to be real. I thought it was gonna be like a superstition moment. He didn't do it. The, oh, no, no, no. Wait, what's going on? Okay, yeah, he didn't do it. Because the knife was fine. But that means you get, now you blame your dad, right? Now we blame the dad? What, did, what happened? What is going on? There's zombies. There's zombies killing people. Okay, this is getting out of... Alright, young Emmy about to have to prove why he becomes a beast, bro. Why is there a zombie outbreak in his backstory? You got the knife still? I don't think he... I don't know. The church, maybe? Yeah. All right, the church is clutch. I, the church are actually good. They're stopping the zombie outbreak. Really was not what I was expecting here. Yeah, it's the same things that, as I was thinking, when the thing came through the wall, I thought it was the same as Kire's, like, gauntlet, which is why I said church. So it's cool that it is the same. It's that same, like, wah. She was the first outbreak, though. She was patient zero. Okay, that guy looks cool. Wow, unironically zombie outbreak. Dang, who's this guy? Watch out, watch out, watch out. Oh, the Reverend. Reverend got bit. It is cool that the church are like intimately tied to his backstory like this though. It makes a lot of the current stuff make a lot more sense.
Hello? Oh, oh. White hair woman with a shotgun? I'm there. Oh, that's pretty, that was a, I like that shot. That was a cool shot. She's about to kick one in the head, bro. No, okay, she has another gun. Just kidding. I'm not infected. I'm a kid. Whoa. Okay. This is what Emiya wanted to beat, bro. No, Emiya's like this nowadays, bro. This is his hero. A hero. Oh my goodness, that word means extra. That's like exactly what he's like nowadays, bro. That's crazy. Dead apostles. Does that have to do with they drink blood? I don't even know. Let me just listen. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking about that. What's the other group? Okay. That's fine. That's cool. You're okay. That could have been a Tokyo meme. I mean, I just say that because fire magic. Then what, what are you part of? Are you... Who are you then? Neither, right? Uh, okay, now your mage association. You're on the payroll. Okay. Marked for sealing the dad. Like, trying to stop time in a person. Vampirism is kind of a connection. So I think she had... Drinking something or used something on herself... Whatever his dad made. Well, did, she must have done it on herself, right? Because she had the bottle. Yeah, bro's trying to get out of Dodge. Whoa. Whoa, he's burning it. Why do you know what that is? Yeah. Okay. Damn. He does not care. Okay. So it was his magic. Okay, man, it's crazy. Whoa. Emiya figured it out on himself in a minor way, I think. Because of time stuff. Or maybe he counts as a dead apostle. Who knows? Always the root. Always the root. <laughs> we need to run now. No way he doesn't betray his dad here, right? Did he just stab him? He just used the da the dagger on him. Oh, this is this is the beginning of the Emiya we know, bro. He just stabbed his dad in the neck. 
Yo. Or in the neck, I assume. I don't, I don't actually know. Gut, gut stab. And it's a talisman, so I might have a little extra juice. The gun, the gun, the gun, the gun, the gun. I don't know if it has a bullet in the chamber, brother. Oh, that's just sad. It does. It's right there. It's getting loaded in. Another one. Just the three? Okay, we'll take three bullets. I take I like the three but I like the three gunshots. I like it, Emiya. One one to kill, two to be sure, three for fun. Are you trying to get the blood off? Oh. Bruh. Dang, Emiya killed his own dad. Damn. It was for surely low key. He's joining her, bro. The gun. He's bringing the gun. No, she grabbed it, right? They're bringing the gun. Ooh, burning the immortal flowers. That kind of good, kind of schmack. Is this especially D? Distant memories, sometimes somewhere. Or maybe it's just the. Uh, no ED, no no normal ED. Yeah, okay. Now they're they're hitting us with some special. This was a special little episode, huh? Yeah, I don't recognize these words. Unblossomed futures, bro. Uh, so yeah, they they hit us with a let's say let's give you a little bit to use in the Emia. They're they giving us a bit of an explanation for why Emia is the way he is. Poor guy, it's crazy. I mean, you can see why he is how he is. Like, no wonder he would like model after the woman who saved him. You know what I mean? Killing his dad though. That, I mean, that just showed the dog in him. Did the dad deserve it? I'd say yeah. Well, she used it on herself. To be fair, to be fair, he wouldn't. Would he have done it later on her or on somebody? Probably. So, yeah. I mean, I th yeah. I actually don't know. He seemed the type. I mean, a beautiful dream was enough to tear you to pieces. The truth and kindness behind those cold eyes. That's Emiya talking to the, thinking about the white-haired girl that saved him. Exactly. Turn away from the heavens. Ooh, ooh, we turn away from the ideal, from ideals. Heavens being like idealistic. Us being the stars. Bring down the sky. Same same kind of deal. Wait, kind of cooking? Okay, ED. You you spit. You spit, ED. Do your thing. What was I saying? Something. Oh. Natalia Kamenitsky. Yeah. Where justice is found. Oh, we're staying in the Emia backstory? Oh my goodness, what is about a dude? This is unex okay, I was not ready for that. I gotta add this. Okay, Emia Um Natalie Hunter who saved him. White hair. I think we might be staying in the in the backstory. I did not expect that, bro. Oh boy. Yeah, Rip Shirley. I mean, there's no there's literally zero chance, if we're gonna be honest. Cute girl plus love interest for Emia. Right. Um, that is in the backstory, and now he's a he's a freaking like, de like um, cynical guy. Yeah, she's just dead. She's just dead, and it sucks because she deserved better. But it happens to the best of us. If nothing else, bro, she had some dog in her because she she look at this. She held it off for a while, right? So you, I'm gonna give her that that she was able to just she was like I'm not gonna kill people. Let me just go eat some chickens real quick. Um. I respect that move. And then she was even eating herself instead of going to eat him. This shot was crazy, by the way. Cause she's she's cutting herself on the chicken wire. And she's holding onto it so so tight. 
And she did, ooh, and she even was telling him to kill her. He should have. I mean, obviously, right? It would have been best, but he had no way to do it. Like, it was, it was not a request he could have fulfilled in his state. You know what I mean? Nobody could, like, who, there's nobody, like, him nowadays could do that, sure. Oh, you want me to kill you? You're infected? Bam, bam, bam. That's him now, but, oh, Maya, you're infected? Bam, bam. <laughs> his own girl. Um, but yeah, so I, I respect, you gotta put some respect on Shirley's name for doing that though using dangerous magic on yourself because you're desperate to like help with something that you care about that's a bit of an ouch yeah i got bad news shirley that's an l that's an l it happens to the best of us it really does i mean shoot you give me experimental magic and say oh i can live forever and maybe like help with the experiments i feel so useless yeah i'm chugging that potion not actually but like you can't blame the girl uh well you can and yeah i probably do a little bit but it is what it is okay um she wanted to come back from it best she can you know Offering to, for her to die is a, is a really big positive for her to fix that. So yeah, that's depressing. Um, they had to hit us with the, aw, cute little love interest thing. I want to see you grow up. We're going to be together forever. You know, aw, we're having such a good time. Eat, go eat chickens. Yeah, it's just sad. It's just sad. But, um, shoot. Zombies. Undead apostles or whatever they were called. Dead apostles. Yeah, dead apostles. Um... Hunter, with the Mages Association, kills your own dad. I respect it. Though he did figure out the dad's the dad's magic and uses it on himself, I would say, right? Some variant of it. Um, because his thing is all about time manipulation, right? And so he's trying to create stasis. Um, Emilia learned how to speed up, if nothing else. So I bet that's connected in some way. Um, maybe, you know... Maybe he just has natural talent for that type of magic because of his bloodline or something. Or maybe it's something he more directly copied or, like, expanded on from, from something he, like, figured out off of his dad's research way back. Who's to say? Uh, but either way, that, that does connect pretty clearly. So, that's cool. The Executors thing. Maybe there's going to be more stuff with the Executors here in a minute in the next episode. Because we saw them and we saw, like, their brutality. But he also joined up with somebody that was part of the whole spiel not an executor but that was part of the burning of the village so i don't think that alone would kind of build into the executor stuff but i don't know maybe a little bit because it's you know trauma is trauma not gonna not gonna block not gonna lie not gonna lie but yeah um this ed lost prayers let me listen to it i'll mute this real quick and just run through the all right no wait no even better subtitle browser let me just read the subtitles for this real quick okay twinkling quietly the stars are scattered across the sky uh, lost prayers fill the heavens and earth. Unfutured blossoms gleam on the slender branches. Unblossomed futures. Shout out Shirley. She's unblossomed. She's dead. GG. Still reluctant. I let the buds fall. Look, the time is ripe. Time is ripe kind of hit because, you know, they're using time magic on, like, plants. Okay. Okay. I can like it. A plump golden fruit for simply plucking it with these hands will cause the world to end. <sighs> yeah, I mean, they were pursuing using time magic to ripen a golden fruit and in doing so in plucking that caused the world to end low key i mean just applying it to the village and like using time magic did cause the village to get destroyed um it could also be like it kind of hits me with like a garden of eden type beat right plucking it taking a little bite of the apple the forbidden fruit type beat whiteness of the falling unblemished snow will disappear once it learns of warmth i like the word learns there beautiful dream was enough to tear you to pieces that's real the truth and kindness beyond behind those cold eyes, the furiously twinkling stars turn away from the heavens. This is a great line. That's that's a really good line. Furiously twinkling stars turn away from the heavens. That just makes me think people turning away from heaven, like death of ide ide idealism, right? Furiously kind of putting some spirit up in there. So like those inspirited humans that turn away from ideals, that would fit really well into Emio's character. Uh, until these injurious prayers bring down the sky... And that line just kind of schmack on its own. But yeah, all right, let's jump to the next one. Where justice is found. I gotta stop reading these. All right, let's see what's going in. A three, a two, a one. Bang. See if it's another flashbacker. Probably is. Oh no, check the audio. Be quick. I know it's in the Japanese. And the subtitles are on. Lit. What is going on, man? It's Emiya in a, a table. Remember the ribs? Oh, it's muted. All right, sorry, unmuted it. It's probably the ribs treatment. What's up, Natalie? Natalie, I have a crush on you. Thoughts? Oh, is it him getting the thing? 
crest. I don't know. Let me show it. <laughs> Dang, young Emia. Yeah, here we go. Oh, did I? I could have maybe recognized her. I didn't remember. Wait, because we've seen a scene like this before, so we might have seen her already. Because it's exactly the same dialogue, <laughs> or very close at least. Mystic Code? The Super Bullets, yeah? Yeah. Oh, with their magic circuits active, so the magic circuit would need to be active. That's kind of, I didn't catch that previously. 66. How many left? I mean, we can always get, just keep taking out more ribs, you know? <laughs> Low key. <laughs> Still flashback, I think. Mm, da -da -ding, da -da -ding, da -da -ding. Yeah. All right, another flashback. It's a little flashback episode, okay. I don't mind. Or duo episodes. This guy is so bad at running away. Natalia. When are you going to meet Maya? <laughs> Straight into Emiya, maybe? Yeah. Bah. Mmm, yummy chicken. Mmm, yummy person. I love nightmares about my traumatic past. Just her? I th she's not part of, like, a couple other people. Aw, she kind of real for adopting him, Loki. She kind of real for that. Training him. Okay, she is a freelancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you want, though? Just money? Reference to the two organizations, kind of. Oh, he don't like either of them, though. He said, bring me with you. I got a gun. Look at me. I'm equipped. You're not ready, buddy. Is It is what it is. You'll get there. It's like if she died on one of these missions. Oh, what's to ha what happens to her is a good question. Oh, no, I don't want her to die. She could actually still be alive is the sad thing. Or the scary thing, you know? I don't laugh. <laughs> she could still be chilling. Which means that, you know what I mean? Ooh. It's true. Well, there's not usually zombies in the real world, but there are tragedies. Dang, a lot of bullet fire. That poor kid. That's like him. That's like younger him. Don't die, kid. Don't die. They're so dead. 
That's really sad. Ooh, this is... Ooh, anti-hero talk. Okay, like Yagami. Bro. Gilgamesh gotta pay more attention to Emiya. Cause he really striving for something. You know what I mean? I feel like he might get a kick out of that. Me, yeah, I don't blame that. You can't save anybody if you're dead. Yeah, really good, true. Yeah. It's a Derringer. I love those guns. Those guns are so cute. New job just came in. Confidential. Odd Vorsak. He is a dead apostle. Okay, so he hasn't... He doesn't have the hunger so bad, but he can't control it. So he's, he's pretty... Yeah. I wonder if he's at all tied to the Matao family because of the bug stuff. He uses bees or something. No wonder he picked up smoking. In fact, you're about to in 10 seconds. Yep. <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, that's funny. Don't cough. You're not cool if you cough on the... Okay, nice, nice. He didn't even cough on the first hit. Don't smoke. Don't smoke. Smoking's cringe. Let me throw that out there. It makes your breath stinky. That's okay. No disrespect if you do. Is that him right there? This guy's outfit is crazy. <laughs> what is this guy wearing? No, get rid of his allies. Okay. Oh, is she gonna die? Bro, she's jumping him on a plane. That plane's going down. Don't die in a plane crash, <laughs> Natalie, please. Dang, okay, flight attendant. Sorry. His eyes are so dead. He's got them dead inside eyes. You are not wearing that on the plane. Try to blend in, my girl. <laughs> Imagine they sit next to each other in, in first class, it looks like. Oh. Just go, pink, 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 back of the head. <laughs> okay. Did she get a gun on the plane? I'm kind of curious. Oh, she's casting a spell. That's what the book's for. That's smart. That's smart. You can smuggle a book on a plane. Heart attack spell. No, I'd like a drink, please. <laughs> nice.
If he's dead, why do I, I feel like that went too easy. Oh, you got his luggage. Yeah. Oh, she got a Dr. Fit. That's goofy, bro. She got a stethoscope. What's wrong? You're already a ghoul? Mm. Oh, I hate bees. I hate bees. You kid it. Oh, don't become a dead apostle. That'd be so sad for her. Oh, he had bees inside of him. Yeah, that's smart. That's a Matau moment. I, I know he's not a Matau, right? But I'd actually have to check. I didn't see his name that hard, that well. Don't get bit. Don't get bit. Plane's going down. She's going to crash and die. Wait, she has to make it there and pilot the plane? She might die here. Aww. That's her singing kiss. I don't make it out of this. That might be their last message. What happened in this town? This town looks so depressing, bro. What? Okay. <laughs> Imagine. Oh, yeah, good luck with that. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Bad news. Okay. I already knew that. Okay. Okay. Oh, she's using that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Well, yeah, I already expected that. It's just 300 zombies on a plane. Yeah, that's true. You got arcane lock? Hey, yo, what's good? <laughs> just, can you, like, shoot out the front window and just leave through that? Because I'm not going back, you know what I mean? Surely you can gun out the front of a plane window. The bees are the real problem. You get stung once, you're hoed. Yeah. No, no talk. I'm nervous. Those clouds are pretty. Yeah, I hate bees. I hate that. I hate that. Why is it like weird looking? It's got like, it's weird. That's a problematic one. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that sounds right. Nah, the opposite. <laughs> I mean, he, he used it on his dad, like, you know what I mean? So, like, that's a pretty... Yeah. 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 Because things are hitting the fan. <laughs> I wonder what happened to his mom. Dang, that's kind of true. I mean, I, I I agree with her move, but... <laughs> I'm a cool-ass mom. <laughs> Thought you were a colder person. She's so dead. I really hope she lives these, but like. Dude, if he has to put her down, that'd be so sad. I don't even know what he's reading for. Don't say you're gonna retire or something. Uh. No, oh, it's so over for her. She's so dead. You can't say that. Please live. I need you to live. You actually could live. It's just not gonna be good. Oh, she's supposed to retire and be your mom, but like, there's a reason we're in the back. She has an RPG. He's gonna kill her, bro. He's gonna kill her. He's taking her out so that the airport doesn't land, so that those people don't get risked. No, bro. Oh, Emiya, I'm so sorry. It's the second time he's done this. No, bro. <laughs> she said fix your aim <laughs> uh. she grins cause she's like she's like yeah that's my boy that's my boy Oh, because he didn't... Remember, he didn't kill her. He blames himself. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. That's crazy, bro.
It's not like he like he regrets not killing Shirley. And the village blood. Bro. Do you not got an answer, brother? Uh... <sighs> it's crazy, because it's like... He regrets not killing Natalie when he could've. And so it's all the, the village's blood is on his hands. And that's why he kills his dad. Because of all the people that his dad could get killed. And that's why he kills Natalie. Because of all the people that would die by that. That's crazy. I mean, uh... Who else are we gonna have to sacrifice, bro? I mean, Eerie is next, you know what I mean? Like, this just doesn't bode well for our sanity. And that's okay. I mean, he knows- he does what he gotta do, bro. I mean, I can't blame him. That was the right move, right? I would agree with the move. Yeah, he really decided I'm never gonna f fail to sacrifice someone again. She was chill with it though. I mean, she knew. She she gave a grin at the end. She was like, yeah, that's my boy right there. So that's really sweet. My kiddo. Sam. Until your screams bring this dream to an end. I didn't even realize. Are they? Uh, did they mix up the lyrics? Was that like verse two? I'll look in a minute. We're getting back to the... Yeah, going back to the present day, it seems. Ooh. Return of the Assassin? Oh, wait, just because him. Because Kira is back in. I, th I thought they meant, like, assassin would re-enter. I was about to say. <laughs> um, was that Waver saying, I'm gonna fight this battle? Did I hear that? Or did I hear that right? This is a battle I choose to fight? Damn right, Waver. You get in there. Oh, Emiya. Him pulling out the bazooka is a problem, man. I was thinking, like, what is he supposed to save her with? Like, what do you do? What do you even do, bro? And then he just pulls out this, and it's like, oh. Oh, we're not saving her, we're saving the town. These seagulls circling around him is kind of goaded, is it not? It's kind of cool. That's so sad. Oh, Emiya. Oh, Emiya. Let me see if these lines are different. Still reluctant. I let the butts fall. Time is right. Plucky with the hands will cause the world to end. Snow, a beautiful dream. Oh, maybe it's the same. Truth and kindness beyond those cold eyes. Twinkling quietly, the stars fill the sky of prayers. This was new, right? Twinkling quietly, the stars fill the sky of prayers until your screams bring this dream to an end. Okay, well, that's depressing. Well, rip Natalie. Um, dang, her, his own mom. I'm gonna call, we don't know who his mom was, but we know who his mom is. You get what I mean? We don't know his biological mom, but he had a mom, right? And we got to meet her, so that was sweet. And his own mom ripped out his <laughs> ripped out his ribs and turned it into bullets. That's a good mother right there. That is a good mother. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, no, no, no wonder Emmy is the way he is, right? Uh, we didn't get to see him develop his magic at all, which would have been kind of cool. I'm still a little curious how that happened. Um, and it's also funny, like. Her saying you should always prioritize your own life. And then he kills her. That's just crazy. But yeah, I mean, dude, what is... This breakdown at the end. 
Him, I like this. This was a really good moment. Him saying "shut up, you bastard." He's saying that to himself, right? I, like he's. I think he's a part of him is so furious with himself for the rationalizations that he goes to to try to protect himself, right? This whole thing of like her sacrifice prevented that, and then he brings up Shirley, and then he breaks down and is like, "What is wrong with me?" You know, that's that's what this was. It's really really recontextualizes the OP where or like I think it's the OP where he's like cuddling up to Eerie and he's all like he's all sad because like yeah oh Emmy uh do I want you to get the Grail I mean yeah I think I do <laughs> he's just an utilitarian and I gotta re I respect that position <laughs> you know what I mean I do respect that position right. And he does it well. He's executing it well, and it seems without any bias. So that's kind of the, like, a really good moral agent in my in my book. So I think I do trust him with the Grail. I think he's actually. I think you can always. I can, I think I can get mad at his execution here and there if I want, but his intentions. Like, yeah, I think if anyone could do something good with it, it would be him, right? I mean, what Iskandar just would want to come to life and live forever, or like live a, another life, you know? Waver probably wants to grow five inches taller. You know, Matows, please don't give it to them. Uh, I mean, who else, right? Freaking, I dude, so many people died. It's like, who even is left? Kyure? Yeah, do not give it to Kyure. <laughs> that is a problem. Don't let him get it. Um, this guy, Vorzak. Let me see if there, we got a last name on Vorzak. Um... Odd, odd Vorsak, so probably nothing tied to a Matal, but I just wondered with the B stuff if there was something. And he is a dead apostle, so that's kind of cool. Um, right, so that's a showing of one, because they kind of implied that you could be a, a, a walking around dead apostle. But yeah, um, um, bro, I love how they animate fire, by the way. I really like how they've done the fire whenever they've done it in the show. It always looks really good. Yeah, I hate bees. Wow. Well, so, Emmy, uh, yeah. <laughs> what do I do with you, brother? What do I even do with you? I don't know, bro. It's just over. Uh, actually, F everything I said. Let's give it to Waver. A six inch taller Waver is more important than stopping the world of the, the damage of it. You know what I mean? No, oh, her grin, bro. That kills me. That kills me. Uh, well, so let's give the girl to him. Um, as a flashback, I enjoyed the episodes. There's always the issue. I guess this is kind of what I'll say because it's self-contained. So I'm kind of already like, oh, shoot, the episode's over. All right, time to end the video. I'm kind of in that moment. But um, I think it's a, a thing with all flashback episodes where like, they can only do so much, you know? And it's like, you introduce new characters, you you kind of have to kill them, or you, ha you have to have an explanation as to why they're not in the current story. And so it's kind of, it's kind of hard to, like, to get me emotionally, you kind of got to catch me off guard or execute it to perfection, right? Um, or overwhelm me. Overwhelming me is the best way. If you can overwhelm me emotionally, then you've got me, right? So that's the best way to, to get me. Or you catch me off guard enough that I didn't have time to prepare myself and then I'm overwhelmed, right? Um, I've talked about like emotions or like shows needing to overwhelm me before for like an emotional thing. And so it's like, I like, I have zero, I like do not believe Shirley is making out of this. So when she dies, it's just like GG, right? And then kind of same thing with Natalie. I was kind of hope, I was trying to cope. I was trying to cope and be like, girl, you can make it. I don't know where you are nowadays, but maybe you do something. And then she said, yeah, I'll just retire. And then I thought, okay, death flag confirmed. She's dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's how I was saying, please don't say you're going to retire. Because that is the biggest death flag you can do. This will be the last job. That means you're not coming home. If you, ad if you admit that you are done with this lifestyle, then you are done with this life. That's just how the trope goes. So it kind of ran into that a little bit where it's just like, it was like watching a car crash in slow motion. It's like, I know how Emiya is. I know what he becomes because we've met that guy and we've known him for like freaking 17 episodes, right? And so I know when you're introducing me, like, to, like, all these characters he cares about, it's like, no, they're all dead. They're all so dead. So, a little bit of one of those moments. I think this, I think the coolest thing that they, that 
was added to his character is like the um the thing of like he could he should he fe- he feels like he should have sacrificed homegirl at the beginning surely and so him not doing that is what kills him so much um and that's what motivates him forward right and so it's like as much as he loved shirley because I, I think he really did care about shirley like kind of as like a sister right um i think it's not even her death that broke him but it was knowing that he couldn't do what needed to be done and that got a lot of people killed and he's a good person he has a good heart and so that's what hurt him that's what killed him that's what killed his old self right his younger self so yeah that's pretty brutal um i really like that dynamic i think that's a really cool character dynamic for someone to to suffer through what do you want to be when you grow up he just wants to save the world you know what i mean he's just he i gotta respect the grind set so hey emmy um i appreciate you dog i hope if it's i hope kira doesn't get the grill i kind of hope no one gets the grill well no kira, i hope you get it emmy i actually kind of don't think he will because isn't i it's it's such a if he like i think what he would wish for to like save the world or whatever couldn't come about oh my goodness but whoa there's so much drama that could happen now like like what about a situation where it comes to the end and like he because remember you need to sac if he if you want to reach the root but he doesn't want to reach the root though he wants to um use the grail so he doesn't need to sacrifice saber but he would be more than willing to sacrifice saber right and i don't see a world that he doesn't sacrifice saber if he's willing to sacrifice his mom you know what i mean and so i think like who who wouldn't he sacrifice prisma illa like i don't even i think prisma illa would be you know what i mean sacrifice your firstborn and you get the <laughs> that's that's him right now like i gotta and i respect it i gotta respect the move okay you know so yeah basically what have we learned from this episode sacrifice your kids shoot rpgs at your mother stab your father <laughs> let's jump into the next ones y'all on to the next episodes 20 and 21 i think it's another double maybe i don't know i'll check my notes episode 20 and 21 of course of course of course if you like the video like the video subscribe if you are new blah 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 comment down below if you have anything to say or join the discord and talk to me either fade zero fans there all in the description you know how it goes but i'll see you next fade zero friday i'll be seeing you then peace